Hey everybody, it's John here and I wanted to make a video. It's been a while since I just sat down, me, the camera, and just talk to you guys about what's going on. Um, there's been a lot going on in my life. Uh, we've had our ups and our downs in the past several months. Um, as many of you know, like Dusty and Tristan, Alabama Pickers, you know, they both passed away. And I spent a large amount of time hanging out with Dusty and he completely just poured into me and showed me everything that I was doing wrong on eBay and we hung out for man we probably hung out for like two years just in private chats just talking and I never made a video about it when he passed away because I didn't want people to think that I was just trying to use his name for clout um, and to honor him, I knew that he wouldn't like that. But he passed away, Tristan passed away, and it kind of left a hole. Um, like, I feel bad because um, when he had passed away, it was in a position to where me and him, we, we weren't talking. Some stuff had happened between him and a friend of mine. And I got into a position where I was not wanting to take sides. And I was kind of hanging out with both of them. But I had gravitated more to my other friend. And um, I never really got to say goodbye to him. And I carried that with me. And then my family got COVID. And we all ended up with COVID. And I had a bad, real bad had that in the back of my mind thinking about Dusty and I got the mic the, the antibody treatment the mitochondrial antibody treatment I think I completely just messed that up but yeah I think that's what they call it I think it saved my life and then fast forward a couple months my wife ends up pregnant another tubal pregnancy we lose the baby I, I'm not going to say I almost lost her, but the pregnancy had ruptured the tube, and she was bleeding internally, and so, like, I had all that weighing on top of me, and her emotional trauma that comes along with that, not just the physical trauma, but the emotional trauma of that stuff kind of weighs down on you, um, and then... You know, recently I lost my aunt. And through it all, you know, I give God the glory. I give God the praise. There's nothing I could do um, any different, you know. I wouldn't change anything. Um, ultimately, you know, he has a plan and a purpose. We, business kind of up and down. But we don't require much. You know, we're pretty self-sufficient um we the covid was pretty good to us like i made more money during covid than any other time so i just seen what i thought was coming like i still think bad times are heading our way so i socked back a bunch of money and um so now we're setting with you know a bank account that's pretty loaded and now I'm working on another business plan. We had cleared out the antique store, sold everything, and now I'm going in the direction of a pop culture shop. I really like owning a brick and mortar because I, I really do like people. So I thought that it would be a really good opportunity to like do something that maybe I'm passionate about. And in 2017, I think like the antique store thing just wasn't me. <laughs> I mean, I love antiques and I sell them. And I still sell them on eBay, and I still buy them, and I go to a lot of antique auctions. But I love the pop culture stuff more. You know, I was a kid in the 80s, so like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Voltron, He-Man, you know, Mask, all that, you know, Godzilla, you know, King Kong, all that stuff I love. Uh, books, I love, I used to read a lot. Not, not so much anymore. I watch a lot of YouTube and um, listen to a lot of podcasts. And that being said, um, I just really am like, you know what, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to open up a pop culture shop. 
and over the past since probably about January I've been working on it trying to get stuff into the store it's really tough to find stuff like I can buy stuff wholesale from like Entertainment Earth but say I buy a widget for 12 bucks like it sells for like 18 bucks so like you might make you know six dollars on that widget and that's a really tough way to make money in a brick and mortar which is why I'm thankful that we still have eBay and we're still selling quite a bit of stuff on eBay so like this week I think that our payout's gonna be like two grand which is awesome because last week was like 700 and the week before was 700 and um, you know I, I know some of you guys probably struggle with this too but I have seasonal depression in the winter time like I get depressed like I hate the winter time so like I want to sleep till like noon one o'clock and then I get up and then I stay up late at night and it's just not healthy so I decided you know what you need to start getting up early so now it is late it's like 12 39 but I set my alarm for 8 30 and I get up at 8 30 and I come in here and I will list I'll list like 25 items and then when my wife gets up we'll have a plan we'll go do something tomorrow we got to take Cooper we got to take him to uh, come here let me say hi we got to take Koopy to uh, the vet so he can get his rabies shot. He can get his, oh, him's my buddy. We can get, <laughs> no, no. So he can get a rabies shot and uh, so he won't feel good, too good tomorrow. But this is my, this is my best friend. This is the dog that my wife bought for her and he's become my best friend. I take him with me everywhere. He goes, he goes for bye-bye rides. And uh, but anyway, so we're gonna open up a pop culture shop, and um, I'm hoping that it does pretty good. <laughs> he's a, he's he's I'm not editing this video. He's just a he's a nut. Um, so I'm hoping the pop culture shop does pretty good. I think that it's something that is unique, and I think it's gonna bring some unique content to YouTube. Um, I love finding toys, and I love selling that stuff. I love video games and stuff like that, but. I still will be doing the antiques because I'm an everything eBay seller, so that means I'm going to sell everything. I'm not going to stop selling cool antique stuff or general merchandise because, I mean, to be honest, last year we did over $100,000 in sales, and it's general merchandise. We have really scaled up on our antique booths, and we're doing consistently $1,000 plus a month there, and, you know, I'm not going to stop that. I'm going to continue to do that but if you've noticed we have changed the name of the channel again we went from nevermore antiques to show me pickers now we're rad relics and i kind of like that name um it's like a throwback to the 80s and relics is just old stuff so like i think it's gonna work out pretty good um so let me know down below what you think about that name do you think i made a good choice um i hope you guys choose to continue with me on this journey i don't want you to think that oh my god it's gonna be pop culture stuff all the time it's it's not gonna be that it's gonna be more of it because that's what i'm passionate about but um i'm still gonna have all of the really cool stuff that we have on the channel and i'm gonna get back to showing you guys we're gonna start doing some yard sale content because that seems to be the key to the kingdom um i've been making videos since like what 2015 2016 and i still have like 6,000 subs um it could be that I just suck at YouTube and I have a horrible personality or that I'm just not making content that people want to watch past you really cool people who watch all my videos. And that means a lot to me. Um, what are you doing back there, Cooper? Don't be a bad boy. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. I've been going off for nine minutes. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a, like an update on what had been going on in my life. And... Um, Tell you guys that I really appreciate you for sticking with me through the times of me not making a ton of videos and for all the people who message me and have rich reached out to me making sure that I'm okay I am okay I'm still here and uh, you guys are wonderful I appreciate you so much more than you'll ever know God bless you guys you guys have a good night I'll talk to you soon